So basically, the idea for this project was to take an HP TouchSmart 9100, which you can see here. It's the business version of an HP TouchSmart 600, or at least that's uh, what it seems to be. Um, it has this DVI output here, and the idea is to take its touchscreen monitor and convert it into something that we can use with anything else. So I took it apart, and I found that it uses LVDS to connect to the monitor. Um, so I bought this LVDS driver. The touchscreen uses a driver made by NextWindow. This driver connects via an internal USB header to the motherboard, as you can see here. I chopped off the cable and soldered on a new USB port, um, as you can see here. I will now show you some clips from the rest of the project. Look what I have working. You can see it's a touchscreen. That's not impressive, because it was already a touchscreen, except for the fact that it's not a touchscreen on that computer in there, but underneath this driver board touchscreen on this computer because we cut this USB cable right so this is the, the uh, driver module for the touch um, it's made by next window it's an IR touch sensor two point um, so it's multi-touch but not good multi-touch um, it's much better than resistive touch but it's not as good as capacitive um, we've got USB cable going out cut put onto this USB cable going to that laptop and then we've got HDMI from that laptop going to this driver board, which I bought from eBay, um, going into the LVDS port here, and you can see the LVDS cable from this computer unplugged, and then this computer has DVI, and that could theoretically go back into the driver board, but this computer actually seems to be panicking that it doesn't have LVDS, because when I try it with this computer, it just fades to um, white, which is strange, because actually this computer was not doing that earlier. Um, I, I, I tried... I tested with this computer, with LVDS unplugged, with the, uh, going into HDMI to that TV up there, um, and it worked, um, it worked, and this, it, it doesn't work with this, basically, it fades to white, but here it's not fading to white. So, I don't know what the difference is. Um, yeah, anyways, if this is not going to fade to white, I'm going to be happy with that. Um, you can see the touchscreen works quite well. This is a laptop that we were zooming on. Because quarantine. Um, this is fine. I wasn't sure what would come up when I opened my browser, but this is just Asus router stuff. Um, uh, it could use a calibration, actually. It's not perfect, but it's pretty darn good. And you can see I have two-point multi-touch, so I can zoom in stuff, which is good. It's a decent touch panel. Um, anyways, this is obviously very janky right now. Um, and I want to make it less janky, and I want it to, um, work with the computer in here, because I kind of like the computer in here, even though it sucks. Um... Yeah. Uh, I should try to figure out what's going on with the computer in here. Maybe plug it into another monitor. I, I was wondering, if the way it faded to white was weird. I was wondering if it's some weird grounding issue. But um, th this, this thing here is not being powered by... Um, by... Uh, it's being powered by this, because this is just handy. It's a 12-volt power supply. It's battery-backed. It um, is here. It's mostly tending a battery. It's keeping it charged. Um, before the quarantine, I was going to bring this over to my grandparents' house and set up an off-site backup, but quarantine, so it's still here. Um, anyways. <laughs> I have a Raspberry Pi NAS thing that runs off 12 volts, and this is a nice 12-volt battery-backed supply. Um, but I'm just using the 12-volt output from that going to there. So they're not even connected to the same ground, but it, it was, like, weird. It was... It, it, I, I thought it was maybe a grounding issue, but I don't know a lot about these things because I'm self-taught, um, because I'm I'm still a high school kid, um, and uh, I I I really don't know what was happening. Um, it was weird, and I didn't understand it, and I couldn't think of any logical reason for it, so I decided it must be a grounding issue, because uh, grounding issues are weird. Uh, anyways, um, yeah, it mostly works, so that makes me happy. Next thing I want to try is what happens when I switch off 
So I just switched off the backlight, but the LVDS driver is still on. If I switch it back on, I don't think the backlight will turn on. Oh no, there, there we go. That would worked well. How, what happens if I switch off the LVDS driver? Oh, th it went white. This is what it was doing earlier. Let me switch back on the LVDS driver. Oh, and it's back. Oh, so that's why it was fading to white. Because the LVDS driver was not getting any input from this computer. So it was turning itself off and it was fading to white. That was what it was doing with the computer. Okay, so it was not a grounding issue. It was just weird. Weirdness. Yeah. In case you couldn't tell, this is not using the backlight driver that came with the LVDS thing. The backlight driver's down there. I plugged it back in when I was troubleshooting because I, I, I don't know. Um, I, ha I unplugged it when I first got it, and I'll unplug it again because I don't plan on using it because this has non-standard connectors, and I don't feel like making adapter cables. Um, yeah. It works, mostly. I don't know why it doesn't work with the computer in here. We should try to figure that out, but hey, it kind of works. We'll make it work. Um, it's night right now, so we'll make it work in the morning. Bye. Hi, this is Editing Toby. Um, so I realized I did a very poor job explaining something. So, um, I said I was gonna fix this in the morning, and then I fixed it in the morning, and didn't show it on video, and just kept going with the video, so I should explain it now. So basically, this yellow wire that you can see on screen that I have with arrows in two places is, um, a wire that is going from the enable pin on the backlight driver that was included with the HP um, to the enable pin for the back that was meant for the backlight driver of the LVDS connector. Because what was happening was the, the LVDS driver was switching off and the display's backlight was staying on, so the display was going solid white. This allows the LVDS driver to switch off the display's backlight. That red wire that's cut uh, where the yellow wire goes into the backlight driver was the um, wire from the computer. They both use 5 volt logic, so this was perfectly fine to do, and I just found it by probing around a little bit. Moving on with the rest of the uh, regularly scheduled clips. Okay, so I was going to pull power from this, which is SATA for the DVD drive, um, and, you know, they have all four of the color codes from SATA, 12 volt ground, 5 volt, 3.3 volt. Um, except for the fact that there's no 12 volts on this 12 volt line. And I guess that kind of makes sense because it was a laptop DVD drive, so it doesn't need 12 volts, but I don't know why they would bother to run the 12 volt wire if it doesn't have 12 volts on it. So actually, instead, um, this is a fan header here, and I have one of these Molex to, um, it, it, it's, uh, this is a, this is a, an ATX supply input, um, and then this is like a Molex, um, mini Molex, uh, floppy drive connector that... That's the word I was looking for. Molex floppy connector. Um, Molex floppy connector um, to this fan header. This fan header has 12 volts. Um, and then that's going into here. And eventually I'll cut this connector off. Like, I'll cut it earlier and I'll solder it. Um, but I did test this. This does work. Um, the, the black is actually positive and the yellow is negative because the, the, this color code doesn't correspond with the uh, HP fan connector. But I just probed around until I found the two right wires, um, and those were the two right wires, um, and I tested it and nothing blew up. Also, my enable signal wire is working fine. Um, I, I tested that as well. So, but you get, we're getting close, cl close to being able to close this back up, um, and boot up Windows on it and disable the internal display. Um, close. So here we are, success. Um, so this is it, running Windows um, from the internal computer. So if we go to display settings, you can see that we have display two here, and we're showing um, show only on two. And then we have display one here, um, and one we can change the brightness on, and you can still change the brightness of it, which is kind of cool. Um, I basically always just leave it at full brightness because it, it, it's not a super super bright display and leaving it at full brightness is just fine um we have the uh controls i just mounted them up here with some 3m double-sided adhesive because where else am i going to put them um the driver board is mounted there it's mounted to a sheet of i think acrylic i have no idea what it is it was basically just scrap material um 
some sort of clear plastic, um, mounted with 3M double-sided tape. Uh, I love 3M double-sided tape. Um, we've got the enable wire going all the way around to the, the, the uh, I'm not going to touch it because it's kind of high voltage and I know it has plastic over it, but eh, not going to touch it. Um, the, the inverter. Got the uh, USB thing from the touchscreen going to a USB port on the computer here, and everything works. And I tested it with this laptop as well, going to the HDMI in. Uh, this is using the HDMI in. This will eventually use the DVI in because this is a DVI. I don't have a um, straight to, well, I do have one straight through DVI cable, but it's in use right now. Um, I don't have any spare straight through DVI cables because um, DVI is just worse HDMI, uh, and most DVI era components also have VGA, and I have a ton of VGA cables. Um, but this does not have VGA, this only has DVI. So I need a DVI to DVI cable, and I ordered one at the same time I ordered this inverter, uh, not inverter, uh, driver, this LVDS driver, and the driver came first. Um, so we're going to put a uh, straight through cable there, which leaves me with the HDMI and VGA port free which are the two connectors that I use most often anyways, and if I really needed to, I could unplug the, uh, unplug the DVI. And then, there, that gives us our, um, nice little computer. And it's running at 1080p, um, as you could probably have told, tell, because it doesn't look terrible. Um... And, yeah, everything basically works. For the external video inputs, they don't have things like the speakers. I had originally kind of wanted to get the speakers working, but I have enough random speakers lying around that I don't really need to. Um, and the computer in here is fast enough that I've been using it as my workshop computer, and it's been fine. It's slightly slower than the uh, workshop computer this replaced, but it has a, but it's all integrated into a monitor, and that's nice. And my, my old workshop computer I was using with this monitor, which I have no idea what resolution this is. And I, th this is just a monitor I got out of the trash. Um, so the, the monitor on this is a big upgrade, um, and the computer's an ever so slight downgrade, but it's nice having it all integrated as well because it frees up floor space. Um, and now I can plug other things into it. So if I'm testing a Raspberry Pi, I can plug it in via HDMI. Um, if I wanted to plug in my laptop or something, it's just, I, I wanted, I, I did not like um, that it did not have video inputs. And the whole thing cost um, a pretty reasonable price. It cost not that much more than just buying a normal 1080p monitor on eBay. And I happened to get a computer out of it and a touchscreen. Um, it was a lot more work. Um, but, um, it wasn't crazy amounts of work either, and I think the, uh, result turned out really good, so I'm, I'm very happy with it. Ta-da! That's all. Bye.